It's a good story. You guys aren't going to want to miss it. And it's something that he's done twice. He is like 99% awesome. But the 1% that is not awesome is like a 1% extreme not awesome. Milo. Milo boy. Ugh. Hi. Say, hi everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to Acres of Adventure. You gotta stop doing this. Da -da -da -da. So, today we're just trying to update you guys on our, I don't know if you can call him even a puppy. Look at the size of this guy. We're gonna update you guys on our great Pyrenees, Milo. And right now, oh, he's digging. Oh, he felt like he got caught. Were you getting in trouble? This is one of his shaded spots underneath our bush that he will go to since he does not like staying outside in the sun for too long, but he wants to be outside with us. So, oh, he's going back. I'm gonna catch him this time. The little stinker. Milo! Milo! Milo, what are you doing? You trying to get under the deck? You're gonna have to dig a huge hole, puppy. He uh, has been chewing everything in our house. In the mornings, especially if we don't wake up with him. We lost another kid's book. Books. Another kid's book today where we lose kid's books and I don't, I'm just gonna say it, it's kind of gross, but whatever. Underwear. Everyone in the house. Everyone's underwear. If it is left on the ground, he eats it up. Chelsea, me, Melina. And uh, he's, he's gotten into diapers. Yeah. That's, that's which so is gross. also gross. So he is sicko. We're just gonna kinda update you guys, see how he's been, and explain to you since the last video we posted when he was probably only like four months old, and what is he now, like seven? eight? Seven, eight? I think seven, eight. Seven or eight, so he's almost like two times the age from the last video, so just kinda give you guys an update and what we've changed, how the new, just having like a bigger backyard for him to roam, and how that's changed it for us. And go uh, from... Yeah, we moved, so that's completely yeah. different. When we lived in the apartment and he only had a little chain, and he actually, he would mark, or just go potty, who knows, if he was actually marking or whatever they were doing, but he would go potty all the time in the house. We had to pick up poop every single morning almost, yeah, unless good. we woke up with him in like the first 10 seconds. That's how much time he gave us. <laughs> he's growling. Yeah, he's growling. I wonder if he feels that there's an animal underneath our deck maybe, and he's digging at it to get it. But now, we haven't, we've only had actually one time where he's actually went pee inside the house, and we haven't had to pick up poop once. Thank goodness, because that was my job. <laughs> Chelsea's the poop picker upper in the morning. Yeah. All right, we're still in the process of figuring out the fence situation. Chelsea went online and got quoted for just the framework without putting any kind of actually fencing in it, just for a company to come and do the framework. For about one acre, because we're figuring about we might have about one acre of fence here in the backyard. I mean, especially if we clear out anything in the back and try to 
get a bigger spot, but it was $27,000. But we don't know if it was like a prestigious company or... We're starting to GoFundMe for our fence. $27,000. Whoever wants to drop your link below in the comments and let us know if you're going to help us. We're thinking of doing like a box wire type fence. So we're hoping that will work for him. Yeah. But. And now we're getting to the point where it's going to have to be us doing it. We were kind of quoting some prices for ourselves to figure it out. And it'd definitely be a lot cheaper, but... It does mean that we have to make sure it's done as good as possible for us, but they need a fence. The wires, he gets caught, Bailey gets caught, they end up knotting themselves so much, and it takes forever to unknot that stuff. They don't get to go as far after that happens. The girls have had... Marks on their ankles from that rubbing and when Chelsea's home alone, it's not a convenient thing. No, but no, It's a lot better than what we had oh. Oh. Gotta hold her up <laughs> Yeah, it's better than their little thing they had before that I took away, but It's it's better for them. Just more inconvenient for us. Yes for sure. So that's what the problem is now. So it'd be nice to get a fence in and I love being out here in the morning. We'll kind of explain to you guys what else that we've seen with him, but my arm is getting sore from holding this one up. So, we'll keep you guys updated. Lunch time for Mr. Milo. All right, so it is lunch time over here, and Milo has his two cups. Bailey has her like three quarters of a cup. We recently switched Milo's food to two acres ch chicken and vegetables recipe. We are right now at seven cups a day. I think that is a ridiculous amount, but I've never owned a dog this big. So that is what we're feeding them. Um, if you have an adult Great Pyrenees, let me know what you feed them every day because I would love to know kind of where we cap it off at. Um, we have kind of been Increasing it a little here and there depending on how his mood is and how his appetite is and we seem to see that Seven cups a day seems to be working for him. He doesn't wake up starving. There's no um, No food aggression or anything like that. So we're happy at seven cups right now Okay, so we are getting ready to leave and this is our daily current <laughs> He's been searching literally for the past 15 minutes because Milo hides his shoes. I found my shoes. So, we are getting ready to do some errands. We have Milo proof the house because we do not crate, crate train him. We let him free roam a few of the rooms as long as we can pick it up where we know he will not chew certain things. Um, he's very particular with what he chews so we kind of know what to put away. But we have done that and now we are heading out now that we have two shoes for Tom as long as they stay on his feet and Milo does not steal them again. It's a fun little game they have going on. Uh, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. All right, so this is his spot when we go to leave and when we come back, this is where he stays. He looks like a huge polar bear in our window, but this is his position. He stands guard until we're back. All right, Chelsea just had to make sure that all the doors are closed that need to, to make sure that we're Milo proofed. We did not confirm it. And she's gonna tell you while we're driving uh, why we need to make sure all the doors are closed that need to be closed. It's a good story. You guys aren't gonna wanna miss it. And it's something that he's done twice. And two times, and the one time was more than enough, and when it happened again, we had to make sure that this house is Milo-proofed. And we're gonna get to you with that during this drive. Okay, so we are on our way back from our errands, and it seems to be that whenever we are on our way home, it's a little bit more stressful than it used to be. Um, about, I would say, a few weeks ago, we went to visit our family on the other side of the state and 
we came home after a long day of visiting and we pulled into our driveway and there was our dog sitting he wasn't on our porch he was like right below our porch just sitting there looking at us and I could not believe my eyes. I didn't think it was our dog, actually. I told him, I was like, am I seeing things? I think our dog is in, like, outside our house. And he goes, this is so weird. Sure enough, I got out of the car. While the car was still moving, I think, because I was in such shock that our dog was outside of our house. And I kept looking at him like, I think this is our dog. Maybe it's a dog that looks like him that came to our house. And I would call his name and he came to me and he was all dirty. And I see that there's a bowl of water out and some hot dogs thrown. And sure enough, our dog somehow escaped. Well, we know how now, but at that time I did not. And I was just in disbelief that one, he was sitting at our house waiting for us to come back because we were gone a long time. And two, I was just like, how did he get out? How long has he been out? Where did he go? So now, anytime we go home, we are on our toes of did Milo escape? And the first time he got out, he got out through a screen. We uh, we currently do not have air conditioning, so we left um, our windows up, but you know the screens down. Somehow popped it out, but he does not even open a door if it's slightly closed. So it completely threw us off that he would pop out a window because that's completely not like him. So we tried to figure out why he would do such a thing. And then just last week we went out with my mother when she came to visit us to go get dinner and we were gone maybe an hour and a half two hours I'd say and it was at night and we came home and again our dog was sitting outside of our house this time on our porch waiting for us to come home now this time we had closed all the windows we had closed the doors we had no idea how we got out and it turns out that we closed the windows down, like the glass part, but we did not lock them. So our dog was able to nudge up the window and jump out of the window again. Now mind you, we have small windows. I don't know how he's doing this. I don't know why he's doing this. Tom thinks it's because he loves us so much and wants to come with us wherever we go. If you have a beer knees, does yours do this? Does it, it's yeah, like- see an escape artist. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So now if he gets out with the windows locked, doors locked, like there's no hope for the dog. I don't know. But it is amazing to me that he stays and he waits for us. It, it makes me so happy that he loves us that much. But um, it's scary because I like, I just can't believe he's out on his own and doing that. Um, our neighbor told us at the time that we were gone back to visit our family. The that time. Yeah, the very first time he escaped that he was out for about eight hours. Now, you know, since we are new, we don't have our neighbor's number or anything like that um, where they could have contacted us to tell us that our dog was out. But our neighbor thankfully made sure that our dog did not go into the road. He gave the dog a bucket of water, like I said, some hot dogs, and kind of looked out for him while he had ventured outside for the eight hours. Um, he went swimming in our pond in the back, so at least that helped him cool off because it was a very hot day but eight hours of freedom he had and he still stayed with us on our property and it is just, that is just mind blowing to me. I've never had a dog like that that is so loyal. Um, so I'm very thankful for that and I'm thankful that he has been safe, but it is also so nerve wracking to come home every single time thinking, is he in the house? Um, I don't like that at all. Even though I think like there's no way he can get out, I just have that little bit of like, could he get out? So that's why I went and double checked because I just, I can't trust myself anymore. And I obviously can't trust him because who knows what he's planning. The moment of truth, he stayed in the house. We trapped him up. We gotta go inside soon or he might tear something up. He gets angry. We have to replace our blinds all the time. At the apartment, I think I changed them like seven times and we've already having to replace a few here, so we'll just get inside before he tears up them. All right, about to walk in. I feel like I need like hockey gear and pads when I walk in. 
It's like an onslaught of dog attack. Let me show you. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Hey, hey, Milo. You guys are okay. You guys are okay. Come here. Oh, ow, ow. Milo, Bailey. Hi, boy. Hi. Hi. Who's a good boy? Hi, you guys are causing trouble. We're used to having carpet with our couches, and now we don't. So our couches slide all over the place. We're gonna have to get the whatever to stick them to the ground. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what I mean. But anyways, so now they slide so easily. This is what he did to the couches. That's, that's what he did. I feel like I'm picking up after this guy all the time. But, like I said, he is like 99% awesome. But the 1% that is not awesome is like a 1% extreme not awesome. But most of the time, he's a pretty awesome dog. I gotta get the house rearranged and settle in. I filmed that. No, you get the slobber. Milo! That, that is the worst part. Is his rule is like a St. Bernard. I don't... Is that normal? It's gross. Yeah, it's not normal just dog slobber. It like sticks to you unless you wash it off. It's like gross <laughs> saliva, slippery, <laughs> sticky grossness and you sometimes you didn't like feel it for somehow and it'll be a few seconds later and you'll look down at your sorry there was a little bug on the camera there uh, a few minutes later you'll look and you're like what is this gross thing on my arm and it says dog slobber it's disgusting milo should we go get your food you want dinner dinner you want to eat <laughs> Yeah, you guys want to eat? You're hungry? Okay. Let's go get some food. Alright. So, if you guys haven't seen how big he's gotten since our first video, I forgot we never really weighed him that first video to kind of let you know. I don't know if he was maybe 40 pounds at that point. He's probably doubled it by now. He's probably up to about 75, 80 pounds. And what are we doing right now? Going down a walk in the woods. We're gonna go walk our property a little bit. So this is all our backyard still. He's barking at Theo, I think. He doesn't understand what's going on. <laughs> so we're gonna go walk in the back of our property. We're gonna take Milo back there. We have a little uh, pond area back here and we're gonna try to get to it and see because I think the sun shines down on it so there is a little bit of open area um, so yeah we're just gonna take a walk in the woods and not get eaten by bugs too much hopefully or catch poison ivy lead the way Milo how'd you go how'd you get to it last time when you snuck out As you can see, if that was going to be any what of a functional pond area, there would be some work to be done on that. 
It's a little more swampy and muckyish than pondish. It's a nice little area and the water stays there, so there's a there's hope for it, but we gotta get all the mud around and actually get some grass growing around, but it's maybe if you vicious. <laughs> swat them away. When Milo broke out the first time, um, our next door neighbor said that he ended up going back and playing in the swamp, is, was her words, and I'm guessing that's where he went. And he was very dirty all over his legs and his bottom. So, makes sense now. And uh, it'd be nice to clear out the trees and actually try to make that somewhat of a cool functional pond area and see some actual, some nature life go into there. And Milo's just a good dog. He's he would love hanging back and running around in the woods there and to whatever access that we end up doing and cutting down some of these trees obviously we would never want to cut down all the trees we want trees in our backyard and if we were going to clear it out we're just clearing we're not clearing everything cleared out just for flat land we'd want to make it where we have trees to walk through and have an area and we just want him to enjoy as much open and nature that we can so Fence is high on the priority so that he has more room than what these chains allow. Even though the chains allow a lot more than what our little fence that we had to start allowed. So we're getting there for him. Uh, I would say that from about four months, when he was four months, now having him at about eight months, that um, not too much has actually changed other than now he's 100% potty trained, which is amazing. But uh, other than that, he's the same dog. He has always been pretty calm natured. I don't, I know a lot of people with Great Pyrenees. I've been seeing on our last post saying how a lot of them are spazzes and moves. And he has his moments. He's a puppy still. But for like 90% of the day, he is just calm, walking around slowly. And he doesn't really actually sprint to run around unless he comes out here at first or he's playing with our other dog or we're running around a little bit with him. Other than that, he kind of just is a very old soul. That's how I think of him, an old soul. All right guys, keep commenting below. I love hearing about everybody else's great Pyrenees. We like seeing, especially a lot of people end up posting about how theirs is like about the same age as ours. And we love hearing all the different personalities. And these dogs, I feel like more than any dog that I've known, uh, you really do see their personality. He talks a lot, he paws. It's almost like he's like trying to interact like a human. It's crazy actually, the more I think of it. Thank you guys for tuning in again. Uh, we'll be showing more of this white fluff. Um, we're probably gonna do a one year uh, birthday video of him. Not really a birthday, no, it's a big celebration. But like a one year, just like what's happened and a wrap up and how he's doing now. Thank you guys for watching our video today. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. Um, trying to get some subscribers up here on this page. Can I say please subscribe too? Please subscribe to all dogs. They got a ten house and a trample.